webinar is uh, developing today the sustainable district of tomorrow and we've invited a lineup of industry experts to discuss the green developments in Singapore, our sustainability effort and their impact and a holistic approach to planning and building sustainable districts in densely populated cities like Singapore. This morning, we are very honoured to have with us Ms. Yvonne Lim, Group Director, Fiscal Planning from the Urban Redevelopment Authority of Singapore, Mr. Lee Lit Siu, Head of Group Property Management, Maple Tree, and Ms. Anna De Foucault, Head of Mixed Use Real Estate Solution from NG Southeast Asia. So in, in February this year, the, the Singapore government unveiled the Singapore Green Plan 2030, which is a coordination movement to advance Singapore's national agenda on sustainable development. I think the first target is to green 80% of all buildings by 2030. The second target is to have 80% of new buildings to be super low energy by 2030. And the third target is to have the best in class green building to see an 80% improvement in energy efficiency over the 2005 level. In a, in a small city state like Singapore, you know, um, can you share with us what are the what is URI doing with regards to planning for sustainability? So, I mean, right from the start, we have always planned uh, sustainably. What we had to do is really to balance between uh, environmental, social, and economic uh, factors so that we can reach a good equilibrium, a delicate balance uh, in all three areas so that we can continue to have resources for the next generation to see how we can together, you know, uh, from a regulatory point of view, request for these new standards, whether it's super low energy uh, in our future sales sites or um, in new developments that are coming up. And this is and in one area is our new districts, uh, for example, like Jurong District. And we need to work with uh, uh, private sector, like XU, uh, our stakeholders, the public, to really together we, we can achieve this uh, not, you know, alone by the government. How can then we get our, our all of our buildings, not just the new buildings uh, up and coming, uh, but also the existing building, and in particular the existing building, how do we then get them to that state where they are the new green mark ready? There is some pressure on the real estate industry as well because um, investors, uh, and, and we rely a lot on investors and our tenants alike, especially MNCs, right? Then they will want to see how aligned are you? What is your commitment level? Region, we are working with multiple stakeholders. It can be uh, cities, it can be government agencies, universities, airports, usually through uh, tenders to, for the delegation of uh, their concession. Or more and more, uh, we engage with private real estate developers to uh, jointly develop tailor-made solution uh, to make their area at more attractive on the long term. We see the benefits of working together at three different stages of uh, the project. Uh, it's either uh, first at the initiation of the project, the second stage is to make the project grow, and uh, the third one is actually uh, by um, contributing to the finance uh, financing of the project. Uh, well, for district cooling to, to work, we really need mixed use. You know, you need to have a mix of uh, 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 officers and RESI so that, you know, the load can, can work itself up. So this is something that we are highly supportive of and is something that we want to do in our next major district, which is Strong Lake District. So within one single development, right, it's not just going to be energy efficient or net zero, a net zero building. It needs to have solar panels. It needs to be integrated with greenery at the same time, whether it's on the facade or on the roof. And underground, you need to have this uh, seamless, autonomous logistics uh, that's going around. It's also possible to integrate district cooling uh, in existing area. Uh, the beauty of this kind of system is that it's a modular solution. It can be developed as soon as we have uh, the base load from an anchor tenant. So, so two, two main strategies. One is I look for the, the, the leap, um, um, the 10, 20, 30%. At the same time, we're also looking at the two, three percent. Why? Because little drops do make an ocean, right? So, so when you add all these things together, then we hope to be able to reach uh, the target of uh, you know SLE super low energy, the 50, 60 percent energy savings. Yeah, we need to work together, and it's not just about energy, right? We're talking about uh, water, waste, uh, and greenery, and these are all key important aspects in the district 
uh, coming together. So in our, in our long-term plan, which we are currently doing now, uh, looking at the next 40 to 50 years, we are in the midst of doing uh, stakeholder and public engagement. And we are talking to people about the future of living, the future of work, the future of our identity and heritage, and of course, the future of our sustainable environment. To develop sustainable solutions on the long term, integration is really needed to maximize the benefits of these initiatives, uh, where government agencies, real estate developers, and solutions uh, providers should work hand in hand to design a better solution. Find that common ground as well as find the projects that we would like to collaborate and, and discuss how then can we um, move forward, you know, uh, and, and together with industry, uh, 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 you know, solutions providers like NG and, and others as well. So that there's this, this very tight ecosystem that we can develop to, to come up with these kind of solutions. Well, NG Philippines has done this year in Brownfield, and I think that's uh, uh, something that we can you know, also learn from, see how it was done, and how did they get the stakeholders together. I think we are always learning, and we always, uh, and there's not much time left. I think we know the urgency, the sense of the, the need to really you know, push ahead quite quickly. And we, we need to be innovative to do that. So I would like to call on all my partners, uh, you know, across the private sector and also the community to come alongside. I think we want to work together quickly and to put in place, you know, uh, the sustainable solutions we need to make Singapore uh, green. Sustainable di district developing one is definitely a journey. It's not just something that can happen overnight, but it's a journey that we have to start today and there's more urgency than ever to, to start it now. And, and I hear, Words like collaboration, partnership between public, private, and also uh, the residents uh, to make this happen. So I think what we do today, what we embark today, is going to be very, very important, very key, big steps uh, towards uh, meeting our goals set forth in uh, the Green Plan 2030.